Hello students, welcome to Legacy AIS Academy. In today's video, we are going to discuss about recently introduced Hoster Aquaculture Bill 2023. We are going to discuss in details what are its salient provisions. Now, first of all, to give you the context of this particular topic, recently the government of India has introduced the Coastal Aquaculture Authority Amendment Bill 2023 through its Union Minister of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dairying, Parsottam Rupala. If we talk about this particular bill, it seeks to amend certain provisions of the Coastal Aquaculture Authority Act that was passed in year 2005. It aims to basically talk about the bill, main aim or main basis, basis of the bill or introduction of this particular amendment is to decriminalize several offenses under it and through this method promote each of doing business in India and at the same time fine tuning the operational procedures of coastal aquaculture authority that is a nodal authority responsible for making sure that aquaculture is carried out as per the provisions of the particular act the bill seeks to also clarify that the coastal aquaculture and activities connected therewith shall continue to be regulated by the coastal aquaculture authorities act and no other acts of government so first of all before understanding about the details of the bill let us try to know that what do we understand or mean by the term coastal aquaculture. So coastal aquaculture has been clearly defined under section 2, 1 sub clause C of the 2005 Act and it says that coastal, coastal aquaculture refers to culturing or cultivating under control condition in ponds, pains, enclosures or otherwise in coastal areas of shrimp, prawn, fish or any other kind of aquatic life whether it is in saline water or saline ecosystem or brackish ecosystem. However, the coastal aquaculture does not include freshwater aquaculture. However, this definition of bill is also going to be changed in the recently proposed amendment and the definition of the coastal aquaculture will be broadened. And as per the recent definition and the new definition, the rearing and cultivation of any life stage of fishes including crustacean, mollusk, finfish and seaweed will be part of the coastal aquaculture. Not only that, in a major amendment, the bill also has introduced newer method and environment friendly method of carrying out aquaculture and here methods such as cage culture, seaweed culture, bivalve culture, marine ornamental fish culture as well as pearl oyster culture will also be promoted in the coastal aquaculture. Not only that, bill also has made stringent guidelines regarding the use of antibiotics and basically it aims to prevent the use of antibiotics and any pharma pharmacologically active substances which can be harmful to human health if it is used in the coastal aquaculture because you know that once these antibiotics, once these pharmacologically active substances find their way into the aquatic system, find their way into the aquatic life, then through the food chain it can also accumulate in the human body and can have severe uh, and can cause severe problems, severe, severe diseases in the humans. Now a special provision also has been introduced as far as the biosecurity is concerned and here it has the bill has proposed that there should be stringent measures that need to be taken and strategies should be built for analyzing, managing and preventing the risk of introducing any harmful organisms such as viruses, bacteria within the coastal aquaculture unit. And to do so, the bill aims to basically establish a brood stock multiplication center where strict biosecurity and disease surveillance will be taken before any kind of harmful organisms or any kind of organisms is introduced into the aquatic systems. All this will also be done by ensuring that the guidelines that have been published in year 2005 by the National Fisheries Development Board is also being adhered to. So basically the provisions on biosecurity heavily derives from the guideline that was published earlier by NFDB. Now, as far as the regulation of aquaculture in India is concerned, as of now it is being regulated by Coastal Aquaculture Authority Act that was enacted in year 2005. Now, as per the provisions of this act, coastal area is defined as any area that is declared under the Coastal Regulation Zone or CRZ notification of year 2005. Not only that, this authority basically ensures that the regulation of activities under Section 3 in the coastal aquaculture is carried out within the ambit of Environmental Protection Act of year 1986 and to ensure that the regulation of aquaculture is carried out as per the law and regulation, the act also 
has established an authority that is called as the Coastal Aquaculture Authority for regulating coastal aquaculture activities in the coastal areas. So if you take a look at the Coastal Aquaculture Authority, who are the members of Coastal Aquaculture Authority? So first of all, as far as the chairperson of this body is concerned, it has to be mandatorily a current or former judge of the High Court. The second member is a Coastal Aquaculture Expert. Then we have the four members that represent different coastal states on a rotation basis and in which we have one member secretary and then further four other members are there who are nominated by different different departments such as Central Department of Ocean Development, Ministries of Environment and Forest, Ministry of Agriculture as well as Ministry of Commerce. So overall we have a coastal aquaculture authority that is made up of 10 member body with one chairperson. Now coming to penalties and punishment, what is the penalties and punishment as per the Coastal Aquaculture Act? So if you look at the previous act that was enacted in 2005, as per the section 13 of this act, it relates to the registration for the coastal aquaculture. That means if any individual, group of individual is wanting or wants to practice coastal aquaculture, then they have first of all to register themselves to the appropriate authorities. And as per the section 14 of the same act, the punishment for the coastal aquaculture or traditional coastal aquaculture that is carried out in contravention to section 13 that means if unregistered coastal aquaculture is being practiced by any of the individuals then it can attract imprisonment of up to three years or a maximum fine of rupees one lakh or in worst case both can be applicable now there also is amendment that is proposed in this particular uh, section of the newly introduced bill and that is named as section 13a so as far as the section 13a of 2023 act is concerned it allows the coastal aquaculture authority to authorize any officers of the authority or the state government or the central government who is not below the rank of assistant director of fisheries in a district to function as an authorized officer to ensure that the that the uh, whatever the provisions of this bill is properly being followed and no one is violating the uh, section 13a at the same time it also allows the central government to authorize any officer not below the rank of government under secretary to function as an adjudicating officer who can impose penalties under this particular act so overall if you look at the changes that has been made in the penalties and punishment section under newly introduced section 14 bill basically says that a systematic method for punishment and penalties will be carried out will be implemented and wherever any person is carrying on coastal aquaculture in contravention of any of the provisions of this act an officer who is authorized under newly introduced section 13a can suspend or stop the activity for prescribed time as well as impose penalties as per the table that is given in the bill depending on what kind of uh, what kind of contravention has been carried out not only that, the officer has also been vested with power that he can even order the removal or demolition of any structure or destruction of any standing crops. The officer may also suspend or cancel the registration of the offender. And especially if the offenses that have been carried out pertains to hatchery, brood of stock multiplication center, nucleus breeding center or any such other coastal aquaculture unit, the penalties range from uh, almost 50,000 to 1 lakh for a first time offender and third time and its subsequent offenses respectively and those who have registered and obtained a certificate the registered offender the penalty varies from 25,000 to 1 lakh rupees for the same offense that means through this provision government is basically trying to encourage people encourage individuals who are involved in the coastal aquaculture to register themselves with the nodal authorities and in that case they will have to pay lower penalty even if they are contravening certain uh, provisions of the bill now this is not the first time the amendment has been introduced in the coastal aquaculture bill before also in the last year 2022 some important amendment has been introduced for example there was attempt made to reduce the regulatory compliance burden on the stakeholders there was also an attempt made to decriminalize several offenses that is deemed as offense under the act presently it also aimed to expand the scope of the law to bring all coastal aquaculture activities under its ambit including even freshwater aquaculture, freshwater aquaculture. And in last, it aimed to exempt the shrimp hatcheries from the application of 1991 CRJ notification that is the coastal regulation zone notification. So after understanding the newly introduced provisions of the bill, what we can see in the conclusion is the bill which is obviously introduced by the Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Rearing 
through this amendment of uh, Coastal Aquaculture Act 2005, is trying to mainly decriminalize several offenses and thus promote the ease of doing business and include and attract more and more people to engage themselves in the coastal aquaculture. Not only it will make aquaculture a very what we can say preferable kind of you know, a preferable kind of acts a preferable kind of uh, job but also at the same time it will help in creating additional employment opportunities especially for the people who are member of the coastal community so that is all about this particular bill i hope you understood the gist of the newly introduced coastal aquaculture bill if you like the video please hit the like button share it with your fellow aspirants as well as subscribe to our channel for more such helpful content thank you very much